Well, it's an absolutely gorgeous day here today, and I'm so pleased to have you joining me. Um, I've been playing around with some of this metal tape, and um, yeah, I thought I'd just share one idea with you. So this is metal tape that you can buy at the hardware stores. Um, it comes in different thicknesses. They use it often to sort of seal joints. Um, sometimes it gets really thick and they use it on flashing. But it comes with a lovely sort of um, sticky backing. And it's a bit like a metal foil on a double-sided tape. Except this is only a single-sided tape. So you can see that that separates quite easily. And you can see that that is fairly thin if I look at that. So what I've done now is I've actually cut myself a piece of the metal tape. And I've folded that in half, and the reason why I've folded it in half will become pretty evident shortly. And um, the next thing that I've done is I've taken some pieces of paper, and I've actually glued two sheets together, and then using various sizes of my flower punches, I've got a small, a medium, and a large, so I've got these little ones. I've punched out my flowers, so this is a double thickness that's been glued. And I'm at the stage now where I have a whole lot of these punched out. I'm going to hang on to these punched out pieces because I feel if I'm doing a journal somewhere and I quickly want to dab some ink through to just have a stenciled flower, that these would actually make very nice stencils. So into my little box with stencil stash, I'm going to put those. So the next thing that I'm going to do is to just work very slowly and I'm going to start by peeling away one side of this um, tape. Didn't do myself any favors by cutting my nails yesterday really short. <laughs> As some of you might know, I work in a horticultural field, so having long, beautiful nails is just not an option for me. Um, when you're working with this double-sided tape, I find it much easier to work with if I still have some of the backing on, because otherwise it does tend to curl on itself. So all I'm going to do now on one half of the inside, i.e. the sticky part of this tape, is I'm going to just press down some of my flowers, just random things. Um, and using the spaces that I have, I will start to fill in with smaller flowers. So you will be able to, out of a small sheet of this metal tape, make quite a lot of these flower embellishments. And they're one of those things that oh, I just find it quite addicting one, addictive once I started um, to get all of these little things punched out. Oops, I stuck that one a little bit too close. But anyway, hey-ho, it's only a little bit of paper and tape. So give yourself a little bit of space to cut out these images. And you can fill up all the way to your halfway mark. Alright, so I'm just going to peel back a little bit more. There's my halfway mark, so let me just see if I could fit a, a larger flower in there. Not really. But if I put them down here, I might be able to. And then I'll just fill up the bits and bobs with these tiny ones. What's, what's happening now by placing these little pieces of double-sided or glued together pieces of paper onto the sticky backing is that I'm creating a little bit of an erased surface and that surface just now will become very evident as to why it is so important. You can use cardstock, you would be able to use your die cutting machines to do this and it will give you really really nice different designs. Just don't make them too delicate to begin with until you've got the hang of this. So now what I'm going to do is peel away this backing. Again, not peeling the whole thing away. I'm going to start by folding this in half. Okay, just to get a nice edge. Like that. And then I'm going to take it. It's a bit like covering a school box. I'm going to take a store card here. And I'm just going to start rubbing down the tape. Don't worry if it's not 100% smooth. It's not going to matter. And you'll be able to smooth most of it out later. And then just rolling up against this um, foil roll, I will gently start to cover the areas that are underneath. And you're wanting to make sure that all the edges around those little flower designs that we put down are well and truly sealed. So there we go, that was pretty quick and painless, wasn't it? <laughs> 
Right, you'll already see now that as I'm starting to rub over the surface that I've actually got these impressions of the flowers showing through. And that's not very defined at this stage, but I'm sure you can see it. And so what I'm going to do now is just to take my paper stump, um, or you could use an embossing tool of some sort, and I'm just going to go around the outside edges of this so that I make sure that the um, foil is in contact with the backing piece all the way around the edges because what I don't want to happen is to have the foil starting to open up as I cut around the edges. So just going very quickly around these edges making sure that I seal them all nicely and you'll see that that becomes quite defined. Alright, so I'm not going to do all of them because I think that that will just be too tedious but I will show you the next step and what we can do with them as options. So, let's do this as the last one. Right, so you've got two options at this particular point in time. You can either work on your designs as they are on this larger sheet, which I personally find easier because it gives me something to hold on to, or you could cut them out into individual designs. The next thing I'm going to do is to place them on a soft piece of foam, or you could use a mouse mat, and then I'm going to take an embossing tool, and mine have got two different ball heads, and I'm going to use the medium one. And again, I'm just going to go around the edges here, creating a bit more depth. Now, because you've got a soft surface underneath your foil, it does allow you to go around really gently, but at the same time, it really bonds the two layers together really not well. So all the way around the edges. And now is the fun part, because you can use your embossing stylus to start to create a few little lines in your petals to give more life to your design so that it doesn't just look like a punched out image. And you can also do a little bit of definition in the center. So you could do some little dots, you could do some cross hatching, you could do patterns, that's entirely up to you. All right, so you're going to get them all to this stage where you've done a whole lot of different designs. Then you've got a couple of options because you would want to ultimately cut this out but most likely you need to have some color on there just to give it a bit of definition. So the first thing that you can do for coloring is, let me just put a piece of paper down because it now starts to get a little bit messy. The first thing you can use for coloring is just a black sharpie pen and that works extremely well. So because I've got a larger piece here, all I would do would be to take my Sharpie and make sure it is a Sharpie. I've got a mixture of pens here. Sorry, I need to take it out first. Yeah. And I'm going to color this black so that it goes over the lines. And the color of the ink is going to settle in those little recessed areas, the ones that I drew on with my stylus. And that's going to give it a little bit of definition. So I'm going to color these in and give it a moment or two just to dry. Some people I know take a little baby wipe and they wipe some of this off. I find it lifts up a bit more than I want. So if while I'm talking, I'm just going to set this one aside so that can dry a few minutes. Here are a few where I've actually used the black Sharpie. And then I've just used a, just an ordinary nail file kind of thing just to buff the excess off and you can see how nicely the um, definition has been highlighted by putting in a dark color so you've got those which will give you the nice sort of blacky purpley colors which are the traditional sort of sharpie colors and there you've got some really nice embellishments which you could either use flat or you could actually mold them with one of these embossing tools and let me just show you quickly while I'm mentioning that. If you wanted to mold them, you could put them down face forward. And if I was just going to do the center of my daisy to make it stand out a little bit, I would just go around in a circle. And you can see that it is pushed up here a little bit more. And then obviously with your petals, you could just curl them a little bit by pressing down on a soft surface. You do need to have a soft surface. If you've got a hard surface, 
nothing's going to happen other than you're going to do quite a sort of stretchy mark but here you can see you can cut and shape these according to your will now one of the other things that's quite interesting about sharpies is is that they are alcohol based and that's the reason why that has worked so nicely on there so you could actually experiment by using sharpies with different colors so here I've taken some sharpie pens and I've done some orange I've done some yellow um, let's see I did a little blue one I've done other yellow ones there's a nice one that's come out in the yellow um, and these ones just to be sanded down which look really nice so let me show you how I'll do that now and as you can see it's a fairly quick process so you know one winter's evening just sitting there it would be great so you're wanting to work on the file side of it I'm just going to rub over the surface of my design and it's just starting to lift some of the colors so let me show you this area here where it's starting to lift as opposed to that where I've been working and the color is remaining in that little recessed area so I'm just using a circular motion so that I don't get any strange sort of marks and that just gives you a lovely contrast so here you have something that is completely unique you could obviously choose any kind of punch that you wanted it wouldn't have to be just a flower punch it could be animals, it could be Christmas, it could be all sorts of things. And obviously the more you rub over it, the more colour you leave. Um, you lift off. I'm actually in favour of colour, so I tend to um, want to have a bit more. But I might just lift a little bit off on that edge. Right, so there we have it. And all that remains for me to do there is to cut out my designs so that I have them in my different size petals. And if you have a nail file and you've got some colour on it and you want to clean it, just rub it on a piece of paper. And when you've got it fairly clean, then if I find if I just soak it in some soapy water, it's nice and clean. So that the next time you use this, you're not transferring the colour over onto your design. Well, I hope that gives you a few ideas to do with some of this lovely metal foil. And um, yeah, I've really enjoyed doing this project. Thanks for being with me today and I look forward to sharing some more ideas with you in the not-too-distant future. Bye for now.